Gina Cancellari has a look at that for us, Gina. All right, we're going to take a look at the seven day because I promised that to you and didn't get it to you last time. Improving weather as we head through Tuesday, then another storm is possible Wednesday, Thursday into Friday and on Friday, I think is the next best chance. We will see some raindrops and slightly cooler weather. Then as we head into the beginning of next week, more sunshine and breezy conditions. I will show you the radar coming up on Eyewitness News at 5, which starts right now. This is breaking news from Channel 8 Eyewitness News. And reporting now that wet roads have caused some crashes uh, this afternoon, one including a Nevada Highway Patrol trooper just minutes ago. Crews pulled the trooper out of his car and put him on a stretcher. However, authorities are saying the trooper called and reported the accident himself. No word yet if he suffered any injuries. We'll update you with more information as it becomes available. Also on the I-15 near Craig, an 18-wheeler has overturned there in the median. Uh, authorities say oh, the truck is leaking some unit. sort of waste. One person was transported to the hospital. Uh, traffic remains a problem, though, there. A one-hour delay on I-15 southbound expected. This afternoon's rain is making driving risky, as you can see. Vehicles are trying to drive through standing water. This scene was from near Tropicana and Boulder Highway. Is there more rain to come? Gina Cancellari joins us now with the answers. All right, not only do we have rain on the way, but of course we have the clouds saturating the valley. Here's a look outside from the stratosphere camera. A whole lot of clouds out there, barely any breaks right now, but as we head through the rest of the night, we may start to see things let up a little bit. Let's take another shot from another vantage point and show you that rain moved through this area. This is from the Boulder Station Casino camera, and off into the distance, you can see the clouds starting to break up, but still you see the raindrops accumulating on the camera because it's raining in some areas. Here's a look at the radar right now and we will show you that we have some strong to dangerous storms now just to the south of Boulder City. Anywhere you see the red, the yellows, the oranges, intense rain happening at the moment. Again, it continues to push off to the south and to the east and behind it there is still some green showing up, not heavy rain, light rain in most areas moving through the valley right now. Then once this system passes through, we are going to see clearing conditions as we head through the night tonight and we will see some sunshine as we head through the day tomorrow. But for now, still unsettled conditions lasting around the valley. I've got the full forecast for tonight in the next couple of days coming up. Dave. Thanks, Gina. Another uh, accident left an 18 wheeler on its side. Both accidents are tying up traffic. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Adrian Arambulo joins us from the scene. Adrian. Well, Paul, this crash occurred uh, near I-15 in Craig around 4 o'clock this afternoon. It involved a truck carrying uh, some sort of chemical, some sort of oil product. That truck uh, lost its load. The bed flipped over, and you can see uh, it started leaking whatever this product is. It looks to be an oil-based product. Now, at least two lanes of the I-15, one going north, and one going south were shut down for some time. The way we understand it, the way we see it out here, it looks like the company that specializes in the cleanup is already out here trying to uh, make the adjustments, clean up this mess, uh, pick up that oil product, and then uh, what you're going to see next is that this tow truck to the right, Lee, if you could pan over, is going to pull uh, that yellow truck out of here and hopefully uh, clear things up here. Now, uh, once that is done, um, investigators with NHP are going to try to figure out whether it was speed or the slick conditions or a combination of both that caused this accident. Uh, traffic on the I-15, at least going southbound right now, uh, from what we understand, is backed up from the spaghetti bowl all the way to Craig. And as you mentioned, there is another accident on the I-15 going northbound involving a jackknife semi, and that's backing up traffic on the other side over here. So some very difficult driving conditions out here. We were just on the southeast side of the valley. We saw some flooded roads out there, and a lot of drivers just are not uh, driving with enough caution, going too fast for these conditions. So again, we are pleading for drivers to please be careful out here because we don't want to see any more of what we're seeing here right now. Reporting live, Adrian Arambulo, Channel 8, Eyewitness News. All right, Adrian. Metro Police are investigating two shootings that took place early this morning. One happened in the parking garage at MGM around 4 a.m., the other about an hour later outside Mink's Gentleman's Club. That's at Wynn Road and Tompkins. Police say a fight started when customers at the club threw thousands of dollars, one dollar bills on the stage. Eyewitnesses say people inside, including the dancers, started scrambling for the money, but when authorities started to close down the club, police say shots were fired just outside the doors, hitting three people. One eyewitness to describes the scene. I had almost walked out the front door basically and almost got shot. They started um, shooting at the front door so I ran inside and hid under like a table. Two club employees are in critical condition tonight. The third victim just grazed by a bullet, not seriously hurt, and no one has been arrested. 
And about an hour before that shooting, as we mentioned, another shooting happened on the third level of the MGM Grand's parking garage. When police arrived, they found one man had been shot. He was taken to UMC, non-life-threatening injuries. Police blocked entrances and exits at the MGM for a couple of hours looking for a suspect. Several people were stopped and questioned, but then the victim decided not to press charges. All weekend long, Metro Police were busy trying to keep the peace in a very crowded Las Vegas. From noon Thursday until 4.30 this morning, a total of 362 people were booked into the Clark County Detention Center. That's in addition to the usual number of arrests. The arrests range from offenses like criminal trespassing and battery to burglary and disorderly conduct. More than 140 people were also arrested on fugitive warrants in the days leading up to All-Star Weekend. Police officers aren't the only ones tallying up the problems from this weekend. Las Vegas business owners and residents were surprised by some of the NBA fans who were described as a New Year's Eve crowd without manners. Edward Lawrence has our story. There was no shortage of bling on Las Vegas streets. Loud music could be heard too. But it was the way some younger NBA fans treated others which stood out the most. There was a really positive element to NBA. It's a great thing to bring into town. Like with anything else that comes into town. But this is the worst experience I've had since I've been at this restaurant. Teresa Frey manages Coco's near the Thomas and Mack Center. She was spit on, had food thrown at her, and was forced to close the 24-hour restaurant early in the morning. Frey says the restaurant lost 20% of its revenue because of people walking out on their bills. I have two girls would not work today. They were so stressed out. I've had them crying all weekend. A pretty disrespectful crowd. Um, kind of young, I think is what it was. And so they get here and they, they feel that, that they can uh, disrespect the place. It was too congested and people trying to get to what, you know, people in the cars was trying to, you know, get to their point of destination and people on feet were trying to get to their point of destination. Not even cab drivers were immune to the rudeness. It's, it's very different. They are not friendly. Some of them, they have a nice, some of them, they have a very bad attitude, you know, so it's hard to deal with them. With all of the people leaving the game Sunday night at the same time, Daniel says his passengers were unrealistic in quickly getting to the strip. Frey says Las Vegas is used to the large crowds, just not the way this one acted. It's always busy at McCarran Airport, but today was crazy. Thousands of people waited in line for hours. Many missed their flights. Airport officials say this is the worst they've ever seen it. Reporter Ted Florendo is at McCarran with details on what happened today. Ted. Paula, this is a huge weekend. We had the NBA All-Star Game, the week-long magic show at the convention center, and the Chinese New Year, which happens to be the second biggest gambling day of the year. Plus, it's a three-day weekend. Las Vegas had a lot of people here over the holiday weekend, and today, a lot of them trying to get home. This is what it looked like at McCarran Airport this morning. It was packed. The line outside almost a mile long. It's bananas. I've never seen anything like this before. It's and even more lines inside. I walked a mile, walked by that whole southwest line and knew there was no way I could stand in that line and make my flight. Congestion at kiosks, ticketing, and outside baggage check-in. McCarran pleaded with passengers to not come earlier than two hours before their flight for fear of adding more congestion. People have to wait four and five hours to get on a flight. And because of the wait, thousands of passengers missed their flights. I was in line for three hours, so I missed my flight, of course. So they said they'd get us on the next available, but who knows when that'll be. Ticket holders were either running, waiting, or sleeping. They know that all these people were coming here. Why couldn't they be prepared for us? It's ridiculous. McCarran officials anticipated a lot of customers. They doubled their staff of service reps, TSA agents, and security. But a combination of too many people trying to leave at the same time has caused what McCarran spokespersons say one of the worst travel days ever. Now, traffic from the departing flights all the way out to Paradise has relaxed a little bit. But if you look at our vantage point here and you look very closely behind the trees, you can see the line is even longer than what we saw earlier. Reporting live, Ted Florendo, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. What a mess. Thanks, Ted. Several dozen Marines packed their bags today and left southern Nevada for Iraq. The Marines are part of a reserve unit, and they'll be deployed for the next seven months to the war-torn country. They'll provide support to troops, such as delivering supplies. Families and loved ones found it hard to say goodbye, but the Marines say they are committed to serving their country. I just... 
felt that I should go just because I mean there are other Americans going I mean if if they're going you know it's it's our country's fight whether we like it or not you know it's, got to pitch in my two cents. For those of us who have family members that are deploying, we want to talk about them a lot. And that's our connection to them and we want to be listened to. And sometimes, uh, you know, your friends get tired of hearing about your son or your husband or, but we just, we need to talk, we need an ear, we need to be heard. The Marines will have access to telephones and email. Friends and family hope to hear from them at least once a week. Dave? Hmm, camped out in tents outside the state capitol overnight. Hear what message these people have for state leaders and why some lawmakers even took part. And I'm Chris Saldana. We're still talking NBA action. Coming up, hear what the NBA commissioner had to say about the Thomas and Mac and its chances of hosting another NBA All-Star event. The All-Star Game brought some big money to Las Vegas and some tough customers. Coming up at 6, we'll take a look at the chaos that went on inside casino doors and why some say it was downright frightening. Tonight at 6 on Channel 8 Eyewitness News HD. As Las Vegas' population booms, the number of homeless people skyrockets as well. Last night, one group of protesters took their message to the state capitol. Channel 8 legislative reporter Jonathan Humbert live in Carson City to show us how that group got their message across. Jonathan? Well, David Paula, it was a tent city filled to capacity with college students, a couple lawmakers, in addition to homeless advocates. But all these protesters were here to make a point. Nevada needs to do more to help out those most in need. It could have been just another chilly winter morning in a Carson City campground, but this day was different. In Las Vegas, we have people laying in the dirt 10 feet away from service providers. We brought this all the way. Michael Lee Las stayed Vegas. in this tent last Florida night, but he's so, been in the cold before. We're being fed a frozen donut and a cup of coffee for breakfast in the morning. <laughs> That's not effective. And we After losing his apartment yeah, and his job this, last year, he wandered the streets oh, yeah, of Las Vegas. I mean, and today at the Capitol, he was joined by nearly 100 others to send a sign to lawmakers to increase state funding and make current conditions more livable. And a few lawmakers spent the night, too. There was a sense of um, comradeship that was uh, really very nice. And the Assemblywoman Sheila Leslie wants to see the state spend $20 million to build transitional housing to bridge the gap between the streets and a new home. To get them off the street to a place where they're safe and they have enough to eat. And then once you do that, you can start addressing the underlying reasons people are homeless. And Lee feels that's a step in the right direction toward getting the streets empty and beds filled. This is not Mexico, this is not El Salvador or Nicaragua, this is, this is the United States of America. Now back here in Carson City, lawmakers spoke out as well about the many problems with child welfare, in particular Child Haven and some of those ongoing issues in Las Vegas. Now coming up at 6, we'll hear how legislators are trying to hold the state and also the county accountable. Reporting live from Carson City, Jonathan Humbert, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Thanks, Jonathan. Thomas and Mac dressed to impress for this weekend's All-Star Game, but uh, did they wow the NBA? Or vice versa. Plus, three climbers are rescued after facing the fierce winds and snow of Mount Hood overnight. First, though, here's a live look outside. Gina Cancellari coming up with your neighborhood weather forecast. Stay with us. Lead Animal Shelter may have opened its doors, but the Adoption Center remains closed. The Animal Foundation says the adoption facility will be closed for a few more days, and that'll allow staff to make sure the surgery rooms where animals are spayed and neutered, those rooms really ready to go now. The Animal Foundation says they hope to reopen the Adoption Center at the shelters soon. The off-site adoption centers are still open. NBA Commissioner David Stern says the NBA All-Star Game will not come back to Las Vegas unless a better venue is available for a game of this size. The star-studded game was held at the Thomas & Mac, an arena that seats 18,500 fans for a basketball game. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Chris Aldana joins us from the TNM with the story. Chris. Well, the Thomas & Mac is equipped to handle college games and other events like concerts and even the National Finals Rodeo. But when when it comes to professional sports, the NBA wasn't impressed. It was a sporting event like no other hosted right here in Las Vegas. So we've learned more about Las Vegas and we're very comfortable here. Prior to Sunday night's NBA All-Star Game, NBA Commissioner David Stern had nothing but good things to say about Las Vegas. The NBA is happy as can be to 
be on the Las Vegas stage, which is second to none. Commissioner Stern even touted a number of reasons why the NBA chose Las Vegas. We understand that Las Vegas has, you know, the best hotel room stock, the best, I sound like an ad for Las Vegas, the best, uh, you know, the best restaurants. But one thing he said we lacked was an arena. Sunday before the All-Star tip-off, when asked if the NBA would return to the Thomas & Mack, his answer was no. The NBA said the Thomas & Mack was not equipped to hold a major league event like this. The NBA had to bring in a lot of equipment in order to get the production they were looking for. Thomas & Mack director Darren Gotti says he was not surprised with what the commissioner said. These arenas today are huge production facilities for the NBA All-Star Game. And you know what, in 1983, they weren't thinking about build, building buildings to create television mega events like this. And the Thomas and Mac did have to say no to the NBA a few times this weekend. The biggest factor that, that they were losing out on is they had 150,000 pounds worth of stuff they would have liked to hung from that ceiling. We couldn't do that. Jumbo screens and power sources are other factors the NBA didn't see as a Accommodating at the Thomas and Mac. We do want to point out Commissioner Stern, though, did compliment the entire staff here at the Thomas and Mac. Mayor Oscar Goodman has said he knows of five groups prepared to invest in an arena, and he is needs now. He knows that he needs to get a venue, a bigger arena, if he does want to bring professional team to Las Vegas. Reporting live from the Thomas and Mac, Chris Aldana, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Chris, thanks. The list of locations for a new arena was narrowed down to four back in October. Two downtown locations are being considered. One near Las Vegas City Hall, another near Main Street and Bonneville. Another possible location is near I-15 and Blue Diamond. And the largest area would be on Las Vegas Boulevard, about seven miles south of the Strip. Mm. Well, after a night facing the harsh weather of Mount Hood, three climbers are safe and warming up tonight. The three climbers fell from a ledge yesterday, but snow and wind made rescue efforts pretty hard there. They were found this afternoon alive and huddled with their laboratory retriever uh, for, for warmth. According to the rescuers, the climbers were not seriously injured, so it was a one-dog night. Yeah, wow. Labrador is a good thing to bring yeah. along on a I guess and so. Boy, surprises for us today. It's kind of yeah. blustery out there. Blustery, wet, sticky, humid. Mm. I mean, we've got it all. Uh, and uh, as we head through tomorrow, though, it's just a new day. Okay. And you'll see that tomorrow. All right, let's take a look outside right now, though. Here's a look from the Sunset Station Casino camera, and we've got a lot of clouds out there, and most of these clouds do have some weather associated with them in the form of rain, some thunder, some lightning even being reported a little earlier. Here's a look at some rainfall totals inside the valley right now. Eastern, 0.15, doing pretty good there. East Cary also doing pretty well. Then down near Henderson, a quarter of an inch of rain has fallen in that area, but then other areas didn't really record anything just yet, although there may be traces of rain in some of these areas. Outside the valley looking pretty good here, especially down to the south and to the east. That's where we've still got a pretty good storm going on right now, continuing though to push off into Arizona. Here it is right now, still holding together some thunder, some lightning associated with that earlier. Then now near Henderson, starting to see some rain picking up in intensity. So if you're planning on going out within maybe the next hour or so, give yourself some extra time if you're in Henderson, also Boulder City. These streets are wet thanks to the storm that's moving through. Even farther off to the north, near Las Vegas, still seeing some rain being reported there. Last report from the airport did record, uh, did report rather, some light rain falling. There you can see this line of weather continuing to push off to the south and to the east, and behind it, clearer, drier weather. And that's going to move into place as we head through the day tomorrow. But for now, as we head through the night tonight, still some clouds hanging around, especially down to the south and to the east, where we could see just a few lingering showers. As we head through the midnight hour, say in Laughlin, then I think by two, three o'clock in the morning, we're going to be dry. Overnight low temperatures on the mild side, 43 for Las Vegas, 44 for Henderson. Then as we head through our Tuesday, check it out. Skies really open up, clear up, and we've got some great weather going on. High temperatures a little warmer for tomorrow, too. Laughlin in the 70s, Pahrump 62 degrees, Las Vegas 66, Henderson 67, and Mesquite 66. It's really going to be one beautiful day as we head through the day tomorrow. Then uh, travel, well, this is from a couple days ago, so we're just going to continue to move on, but realize there are some interesting uh, forecasts around the country for tonight. Then, as we head through our area for tonight, 43 degrees, cloudy, uh, rain ending, rain clearing up, a little more sunshine as we head through tomorrow. It will be a beautiful Tuesday. Too bad the holiday wasn't tomorrow, then all the kids could have been outside playing. But, mm -hmm. as we head through tomorrow night, great weather, continuing to stay great as we head into Wednesday. Then the next storm approaches as we head into Thursday. Then, mm. can you believe it? More rain is in the forecast for Friday. It is possible
possible. We'll see some raindrops falling on that day, and then we're going to clear out and dry out for the rest of the week. Yep. All right, Gina. Well, an immigration official from the Bahamas has resigned over controversial photos showing him and Anna Nicole Smith. The details still ahead. And we'll show you this incredible video of a snowboarder who caused an avalanche. Caring for an aging parent can be traumatizing enough, but trying to do the right thing for a parent can also cause real financial hardship. We'll have solutions all week during our special series, The Caregivers. That story plus much more tonight on the CBS Evening News. The immigration minister of the Bahamas has resigned after pictures surfaced of him with the late Anna Nicole Smith. The pictures show the pair in bed, fully clothed but embracing. This raises speculation that Minister Shane Gibson gave Smith special treatment in her recent fights to get permanent residency in the Bahamas. The minister denies that he did anything wrong. Some amazing video out of Utah. Watch this snowboarder as he makes his way down the mountain. Eventually triggering an avalanche. Look at that. Fortunately, he was not hurt. Several other avalanches this weekend in Utah, Idaho, and Montana took six lives. Mm. Metro Vice officers say Las Vegas might have more illegal prostitutes today than ever before, and that arresting these women is never really going to solve the problem. And that's where this woman comes in. Annie Lover spent more than a decade as a Las Vegas escort until she hit bottom, she says. These days, she is taking her message to the streets, sometimes by limo. <clears throat> Excuse me, trying to help prostitutes find a way out of a life that is far from glamorous, she says. Back when I first got here for the first five years, I had a pimp. So I wanted to prove myself that I was the best girl he's ever had. I was so in love with him. I would do anything for him. And um, I was so brainwashed. I just wanted to work. And um, I had a lot of clients that, that raped me. I had a lot of gunpoint in suites and hotels, nice hotels. I don't need to say their names, but um, yeah, dangerous situations. Lobert found religion, but she doesn't preach to the working girls. She's trying to get her program incorporated into the local court system. Tonight at 11, George Knapp of the I-Team takes us along for a ride with this one woman deliverance squad. Hmm. Mardi Gras festivities are underway in New Orleans. But not everyone's enjoying the party. Find out why when we come back. The party in New Orleans still going strong today. Oh, Mardi Gras. Tomorrow is Mardi Gras or Fat Tuesday, and the city's definitely forgetting its troubles for a little while. But despite the crowds on Bourbon Street letting loose, business owners say post Katrina problems are still lingering. Rent, utilities, and insurance has skyrocketed. There's been a high number of murders, mm -hmm. makes it hard for stores to keep their doors open. Officials hope the festivities, though, will bring tourists back to the city even after all the events are done. Gina has a quick update. Yes, we have a flood advisory that's in effect for the Lake Mead area. If we could take a quick look at the radar, show you the strong rain that's moving through this area. And anywhere you see highlighted in green here, this is where the flood advisory is. And this takes us through 645 tonight. So if you are going to be traveling in any of these areas, turn around, don't drown. That's the best advice I can give you. If Makes you see sense. rain on the road, turn around. Thanks, Gina. You're welcome. And thanks for watching Eyewitness News at 5. We'll see you at 6.